and uh, I'd like to welcome all the members of the public and uh, who've joined us at the back there. Um, there are speakers at the back, so I believe that you can hear us, but if you can just uh, raise your hand to say that you can, because I wouldn't want anybody not to hear. Okay, that, that's great. Thank you for that. Um, so the purpose of the meeting is to scrutinise the urgent care consultation process. Um, and the general format this evening, uh, we've got quite a number of presenters. Um, we've got Wirral Health and Care Commissioning, um, who will do the presentation to members. Um, we have a number of five-minute clinical and patient witness statements here. Um, and then um, the chance to respond to those statements before the floor is opened up for questions. Um, just so that everybody's clear, this is not a joint um, overview and scrutiny committee. What it is, is an adult overview and scrutiny committee, but we have invited in the children's committee uh, because there is obviously an overlap. Now, children's um, committee members, you will be able to ask questions and I'll have a table there for you. Um, however, if there is a vote, then you will be allowed to vote. That vote will only be um, taken by the adult committee. Okay. Well, that's what it says on I've checked that with committee services today, and, and that's, uh, that's correct. Wendy? Uh, thank you, Chair. Could I just express our disappointment that that's the way things are? As there's a lot of committee members um, from, from across the Children's Committee have come here today. Um, and uh, it's, it's just really disappointing that they aren't able to be fully involved after they've made that um, presence. Thank you, Wendy, and I, and I do know that's however it's in the constitution of the council, so I really have nowhere else to go with that. Thank you for your comment. Sir? I'm sorry that for all particular reasons I wasn't able to meet the meeting of spokespersons to discuss the format, so I fully apologise for not having had an input at that time, which was down to my fault. Unfortunately, it has not worked out quite the way some members would have expected. I uh, wonder how we might involve members of children's services in for preparing any uh, report that comes from this committee once they've heard the proceedings. Well, we have the um, committee chair here, um, and perhaps Tom, you'd like to speak on that, please. I don't know if you're to the table. Uh, yeah, sure. um, I'm happy for the report to come to uh, Children and Families Committee and we can have uh, <coughs> recommendations and comments uh, on the report. Um, it's, it's unfortunate that you know, this is in the Constitution and we can't have a joint meeting, but ultimately the Constitution does not get to if we feel we need to change it, we can. Okay, thank you, Leslie, and then we'll need to move on to the meeting. So I think any reasonable person would, would be able to assume that they were here as a full and voting member. So um, if it's in the Constitution, it really wasn't explained. And, you know, we don't all sit with the Constitution and drop. We don't all sleep with the Constitution and drop pillows at night. But it clearly says on the voting pages that it's a chief joint meeting with members. So in the future, if that's how it's, um, you know, if we have any more reasons um, similar to this, then clearly it has to be made simple and it has to be put down in a sensible language that it's not built as a joint meeting because clearly there's a number of members here tonight obviously interested in the issues, but uh, clearly we're here under the assumption of uh, having full voting rights. So we could perhaps look at that for the future so there's no um, discrepancy with why members have or haven't been invited here. Thank you, Councillor Randy, and I would completely agree with you because I think we're all in the same boat here tonight. But what I will do is ask our board solicitor just to uh, just to give us a brief on that, please. Yes, there are certain legal provisions under which councils can arrange joint committees. For example, we can have a joint committee with, with all the local authorities, but in our constitution, the the overview and scrutiny committees are separate committees, and so rather than being a joint uh, committee, this is really coming together of the two committees to discuss a matter of common interest and the adult committee has um, invited the children's committee to attend 
Um, and so unfortunately that does mean that the children's committee members are unable to vote, but they can ask questions and take part in. <coughs> Okay, thank you for that. Um, so we'll actually start with the presentations and um, Paul Cowan, um, I know you've only just hot-footed it in here, but if you can start with yourself, please. Thank you very much. Thank you for your tolerance and my... Oh, get into the microphone, please. Sorry, it's not usually something people complain about not being able to hear me. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So, sorry, Paula, before we do, uh, just a couple of things. I've just been reminded I didn't ask for the declarations of interest. Um, so I do need that. Um, I need to, um, there's no apologies as far as I'm aware. Um, and for declarations of interest, um, particularly um, for those um, presenting um, those witness uh, statements, then I think we need to be clear if there are any declarations of interest. Um, could I just ask as well the um, the people in the um, in the audience, uh, members of the public, if you can't hear, um, obviously we are going to try our best. We've all got microphones, um, but I would ask that rather than shout out, which can be um, off putting to to other people, um, if you can just raise your hand if you if you can't hear me. That would be, or if you can't hear members, then that would be really helpful, and we can try and do something about that. Okay, thank you. Paula? I did say, didn't I? Is there any declarations of interest? Sorry, Christina? Um, Sutherland also worked for the NHS for the daughters of the GP. Thank you. Sharon? Daughter works for the NHS. Daughter works for the NHS. Phil, I'm the governor of CWP, nominated by World War Council. I work for the NHS. My son was a GP in the NHS. Members of the audience who are clearly waving your hands, can you hear me? And did you hear Mary? Okay, so I think the problem is then, um, there are speakers at the back, so I would just ask that anybody who does speak into the microphone, that you be clear, be loud, um, and you've got the microphone quite close to you. And again, I'd just ask, because I don't want anybody not to hear anything, if again, you just raise your hand, and we'll, we'll see if we can do something about that. Okay, thank you. Paula. Are we ready? Uh, good evening, councillors, uh, colleagues, and uh, members of the audience. Thank you very much for giving us the opportunity from Rural Health and Care Commissioning to come and um, update you on the urgent care consultation process thus far. I have lots of whispers in my ear about declaring my interests, and I certainly will myself. I'm a GP at Eastern Group Practice in Bromborough and I'm Medical Director at Rural Health and Care Commissioning, and my husband is a consultant at our local hospital trust. Um, as I said, I am very grateful uh, for you giving us the opportunity to come this evening to discuss the urgent care consultation, to give an overview on the process thus far, um, the consultation as it is, as it stands, and um, to dispel some of the myths that have been um, published in the social media and in the printed press and really to, to, to give an over, uh, to, as I said, to give an overview on, on where we are in delivering um, on the consultation and what we would like to deliver for urgent care. Um, as I said, I'm a GP and I'm more than happy to answer any of the clinical questions at the end of, of the presentation. And my colleague, Helen Downs, who's also here, is a GP also, uh, and our clinical lead for urgent care. So we're more than happy to take questions. The presentation will be delivered by Jackie Evans, who's our uh, commissioning need for urgent care. And so I'll pass over to Jackie to allow her some time to deliver the presentation and then we'll take queries and questions at the end if that's okay with everybody. Thank you, Paula. Uh, good evening, everyone. Can I just check? Can everybody hear me at the back? Thank you. Um, okay, so um, we have um, 
few slides uh, to go through this evening. It will probably take about 20 minutes if people can bear with me. I'm going to attempt to pull out some of the key messages from previously circulated background and supporting papers. Um, I think, uh, as Paul has said, this is a real opportunity to improve the urgent care offering model uh, so that we have something which is sustainable and future-proof. Um, but just to reiterate the point that we are in the process of engagement and consultation and we genuinely want to ensure that we get this right. Um, so this is part of that consultation and engagement process. So just to start us off, um, why are we doing this? Um, our key priority is to improve urgent and emergency care for people in rural. Um, and we recognise that the current system is severely challenged. We want to create a single front door, streamline services, reduce variation and ensure there is a consistent offer for people across Wirral. In, in improving that offer, we want to ease pressure on Wirral's only AME. So we want to make sure that AME is freed up for those most in need of emergency care or life-threatening situations. And from the, some of the future slides and the information we've already shared demonstrate the significant numbers of people still turning up to AME um, because either they're not sure where to go um, or they can't get a GP appointment or whatever it is at the time they believe they need it. Um, and we, we have immense pressure being felt by our a &E department. We also want to reduce the impact on ambulance turnaround times and I'm going to come on to some of those challenges in a moment. As part of this we have to create a better patient experience, making sure we are maximising our resources, making good use of taxpayers' money in the rural pound and making sure that people are seen at the right time, the right place, by the right people. Um, and in doing that, addressing the variation that we have currently across rural, and um, supporting that neighbourhood model of bringing care closer to home. And part of our offer, as we describe it shortly, is about how we make best use and align with the national requirements uh, for people to be able to access uh, primary care, that's GP and nurses, eight to eight, seven days a week, and how that improved 111 offer, that is part of the national requirement to improve, as well helps form part of our urgent care offer. So what are our intentions? 